I would like to invite you on a tour of a Brooklyn neighborhood that's bursting with color, flavor, and music. Please join me as we put the spotlight on Crown Heights. Rich in Caribbean, Jewish, and African American culture, Crown Heights attracts tourists from all over the world. First stop, Labor Day. Enormous crowds descend every year on Eastern Parkway just to jump up at the West Indian Day Carnival. It starts at Schenectady Avenue and goes along Eastern Parkway to Grand Ami Plaza. The carnival was moved from Harlem in the mid-1960s to Brooklyn. Over two million people coming from all over the world. They will see more than 40 costume bands, meaning groups of fabulously colorful costumes. The vibrancy of the Caribbean comes to life on Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn every year. Historian Barry Lewis reported that back in the 19th century, this area was farmland. Anglo-Dutch farmers populated the area, but there was a community of free blacks nearby. Those Dutch farmers called the section Crow Hill. Today, people of all colors dine at the trendy restaurant, which proudly bears the same name. It's very much a family-oriented neighborhood place. Uh, people say it's like the TV show Cheers in the sense where everybody knows your name. And what brings diners in is one of their signature dishes reflecting the influence of the islands. This neighborhood has a large Caribbean influence and so we've taken a lot of the spices from, uh, from the Caribbean and used that in a medley of uh, vegetables, shrimps served over rice, uh, very spicy but not overpowering. People will, will travel from distances uh, to come here because the food is really uh, unlike no other. The surface is quick and friendly. And the food is really good. Crown Heights is so unique because of the diverse cultures that call this neighborhood home. We're here at the Jewish Children's Museum, which is a place for fun and learning for the entire family. We opened with the vision and the mission of bringing a better understanding of the Jewish experience to young children and of course adults who would visit with them, families and children. The museum is in memory of my son Ari Halberstam who was murdered on the Brooklyn Bridge. Well we have um, several different pavilions with different experiences. One of them is the holiday pavilion. We have the Sabbath experience that we have all over in different, in different countries all over the world. The purpose and the mission of the museum is to have every single child walk through its doors. We have reached out to the public school. We continue reaching out to the public that surrounds us, the community that surrounds us and beyond. And the best part of all of this is that we have mass transit right outside our door. So it's very easy and very accessible for anybody to come in. People come from near and far to hear the New Life Tabernacle Choir sing, proving that this neighborhood moves to its own beat. Think about being able to hear great singing like this every Sunday. Well, you can find it at 1476 Bedford Avenue. People are always empowered and motivated and inspired by the gospel in song. The New Life Tabernacle Choir has graced the stages of many notable venues, as varied as Lincoln Center and the Apollo Theater. What's on the program today? Today is our annual street festival, our street fair, and this day is for the people here in the community. Tell us, how has music made an impact in your church's ministry? The preaching is the most important part, but the music, the music ministry, the choir, sets the tone and sets the pace. People have come from across the country and across the world to experience the intensity and, and uh, the emotion that is birthed in authentic gospel singing. So 
the next time you're looking for a neighborhood filled with culture and excitement, try taking a trip to Crown Heights. For Transit Transit News, I'm Malika Simmons.